Turning now to another creative type whose life took a sharp turn during this pandemic, Christina Wong. The L.A.-based comedian and performance artist was all set to tour her new one-woman show when the pandemic hit. Her shows got canceled. The props and costumes she had sewn for the show got put into storage. And suddenly, Christina Wong had a whole lot of time on her hands. But not for long. She went on to start a Facebook group called the Auntie Sewing Squad, working with volunteers to make face coverings for folks around the world. Her experience will be chronicled in a book coming out this fall. Christina Wong gave us a sneak preview, beginning with how the group officially got its start. I saw this article go by um, that a hospital had passed on this um, fabric so mask sewing pattern and that hospitals were requesting masks. And I was like, okay, I opted not to be an essential worker with my career, but I can save a nurse. So I found some scraps of fabric I sewed them on this machine. I sewed my very first mask. I felt very proud of myself and made this very naive offer. Hey, if you're immunocompromised, if you're an essential worker, let me make you a mask. Um, happy to serve, happy to help, uh, all health matters, right? And not realizing what a naive offer that was to make to the entire world because I, of course, uh, as, as powerful as I think I am, I don't, <laughs> I don't have infinite amounts of time and I'm not expendable. Um, but within a matter of, of a day, I was just avalanched by some really scary requests from nurses, from essential workers, from people who had seniors in their family, people who thought they had COVID symptoms. And I said yes to everybody, even though I had no materials, uh, had no time, had, had, had barely started sewing masks. And uh, four days later, I started the Auntie Sewing Squad, thinking it was just a casual Facebook group where I would just talk to my other friends who were sewing masks and maybe siphon some masks that they had no homes for to all the people I had promised. Um, and now, 15 months later, we still exist. We're still sewing. We recently announced our retirement date. Um, so our last masks that we will send out as a group will be August 15. Christine, I want to ask you about this kind of period of denouement, uh, for lack of a better word, because, you know, we've seen that, you know, the, the mass mandates have been rolled back. You know, people are getting yeah. vaccinated, so they don't feel like they need them. But there are, are still certainly pockets of people out there who still want them or feel strongly that they need them. How, how have you seen the, the demand shift over time, especially in these more recent weeks? Yeah, so right now the demand remains uh, migrants at the border seeking asylum today uh, and over the weekend. I sent about 20,000 disposable masks that organizations here in LA had no uh, home for, and there's still a need for them um, by folks who are currently like in shelters seeking asylum, and they don't have washing machines to wash the way they would our reusable masks. So um, if you're looking for places for your disposable masks, uh, the Auntie Sewing Squad can send you some addresses to, mm. to mail those off to. Um, children are not all vaccinated, so we've been doing a lot of farm worker children, uh, but it's mostly farm workers uh, and migrants at the, at the border. Um, those who are the last to be vaccinated, those who uh, live in areas that are very vaccine hesitant, um, we find ourselves still sending masks on. And let's talk about the anti part of it. What does this notion of anti mean to you? And, and who is this squad that you have put together? <laughs> and what has happened with you guys kind of over the trajectory of this pandemic? Yeah, the term anti is used as a term of affection in many communities. I know the first time I traveled to Hawaii, little kids would call me auntie and I, my heart would just be like, oh my God, how do I put you in my will? I'm like so enamored by being called an auntie by this kid I've never met. And um, I, I found that it's like been a wonderful way to like grow older is to like adopt this auntie persona. But I love this idea that this, um, <laughs> that, that this war against COVID was not being fought by soldiers with guns, but by aunties on sewing machines. And I didn't really think that deeply about it. Um, I, I was just like frantically trying to find help and was hunched over my phone and was like, what do I call this? I call this auntie sewing squad. And I had no idea that her acronym was ASS. Like I just <laughs> was so rushed. I didn't think that we'd have a logo one month later. I did not think we'd be around for 15 months. Um, and, and maybe if you told me 
on that first day, you're getting yourself into a lot of quicksand, young lady. Like, I don't know if I would have signed on to any of this. Like, I would have just maybe made sourdough bread instead. But here we are, we did this. Um, our aunties, we have over 800 volunteers of all genders um, who, uh, some are, some are mother-daughter peers, some are father-kid peers, right? Like, we have um, uh, aunties all over the country and uh, basically we post a need and they pledge uh, their labor and mail it out. And then we have a whole system to reimburse folks and stuff. But most of us were strangers to each other or casually maybe had friendships. And now we feel like we've been part of this family and this community that we could have never replicated in any other situation. Uh, Christine, I do want to end by asking you about, as you mentioned, you know, you were gearing up to go on tour and do all of this stuff. And I know that you are returning turning to that part of your life a, a bit again, which I'm happy to hear. So can you talk to me yes. from the performance artist aspect of your life? What is it like to be entering this new chapter of our existence here in California? Yeah, well, I am uh, I was very fortunate to be able to translate Christina Wong for Public Office, the live show onto Zoom. So I actually toured it quite a bit before the election. And during the course of the pandemic, my brain was like entrenched like 80 hours a week in the Auntie Sewing Squad. So I started to create like a living diary of the show, just the pandemic through my lens of being basically what I call a sweatshop overlord. All the aunties call me overlord because I made this like offhand joke that my weird ancestral destiny is my, my grandparents came to the United States, worked in garments, and now I'm like their college educated granddaughter working for free doing similar work because America failed to prepare us for this crisis. So anyway, so I, I've been creating this show called Christina Wong Sweatshop Overlord, uh, which which played throughout the duration of Zoom and, uh, uh, sorry, which the show played throughout the duration of the pandemic. And now it'll be premiering off Broadway and New York Theater Workshop in November. So a little bit of a weird silver lining for a completely hellish and miserable pandemic, yeah. I guess. But if there's anyone who deserves a silver lining, Christina, it is you. Christina Wong, thank overlord you. of the Auntie Sewing Squad, thank you for all that you've been doing throughout all of this, and thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.